keeping track of your stuff. Welcome to another Text Donation interview. I'm Fred Fishkin, and with us from Toronto-based Beware is Senior VP of Sales and Marketing, Brian Boychuk. Thanks for taking the time with us, Brian. Thank you for having me. Well, before we jump into what is brand new, uh, give us a little background about Beware, B-E-W-H-E-R-E. Beware is uh, it's referred to as a mobile uh, IoT uh, company. So mobile IoT relates to cellular IoT and specifically um, the flavor is low power 5G. So it's part of the 5G standard. They created a low power version that uh, can be used for things like asset tracking or connected sensors. You've been working in the, in the mobile internet of things space for, for quite a few years and have some pretty well-known customers and partners. Tell us about the, the kinds of products that you've come out with. Um, so with the um, uh, advent of low power 5G, uh, my background, I was a co-founder of a telematics company a couple of decades ago and uh, used to track the vehicles, which are considered powered. Um, and with the advent of low power 5G, uh, the, the idea of, you know, we always got the question, can you track what's on the back of the vehicle? So that sort of non-powered asset tracking. Um, so that's, we've created some devices that, uh, that work over it's the LTEM networks or the NBIOT networks, depending on where you are on the planet. And they, um, they're, they're a bit disruptive in terms of the price points for the cost of the technology and also the, um, the, the functionality, the low power aspect. As with everything in life, you know, the better you can do on battery life, it introduces some interesting use cases for um, applying it to tracking or connecting sensors, that sort of thing. Now, a lot of folks, uh, consumers and, and, and others are, are interested in, and have been buying these trackers for their key rings and other devices for, for a number of years now. Pretty popular and it's been growing. Apple's gotten into the business now and, and others as well. So, so tell us what the differences are. If we explain this to consumers, you're talking about a, a, a bit of a different animal. Sure. Yeah, no. I mean, when people ask me about the, the, the IoT stuff, it, I mean, in general, it's just an obnoxiously large market. Just uh, with the new technologies that have come, um, you know, when we launched vehicle tracking, you know, 20 years plus years ago, we, we, look, we looked at 350 million vehicles in North America at the time, roughly. And, you know, if we could get a fraction of a percent of the market, we could feed the family with the company. Uh, the, the, the asset tracking piece, for example, and it connected sensors is an even larger. It's, it's just orders of magnitude larger. Like the market is just stupendously large. It's really, you know, the form factor, the price points coming down to where you can start to do these kinds of things. Uh, specifically with the low power um, IoT stuff, it's, it's, a, it's a wider area network. So, you know, this, if a device is sent from, you know, uh, Pittsburgh to uh, Cleveland to um, Atlanta, you can track it as opposed to, you know, uh, some of the technologies are, they're pretty cool for tracking things within a range that be within range of your phone. Um, and there's plenty of applications for that, but there's, a, you know, there's also a large variety of applications that need that longer distance. So tell us, so you've got something new coming to market that's a little different from what you've had before. You can uh, show us and tell us. Sure. So when we originally launched um, um, about 2018, you know, the asset tracking was the easy piece for folks to wrap their mind around. And you got these, you know, small devices, you know, fit in the palm of your hand, a solar rechargeable for stuff that spends time outside, a, a battery powered version for stuff that doesn't spend much time outside. Um, and, you know, this would report a couple of times a day, three or four times a day, you set a timer report for tracking things like generators or um, uh, even pallets, that sort of thing. Um, and we basically took that concept and like everything else in life, it moves towards miniaturization. So we, uh, we took a device, that same device and jammed it all into that little, uh, um, package you see there, we call that the B mini. Um, and it basically, we've reduced the battery footprint, but it's got all the functionality you see in this device, which was, you know, temperature, humidity, barometric air pressure, and accelerometer. Um, you can, you can monitor light as well. Uh, and we've taken that and we've put it into here. We also have um, a Wi-Fi sniffer, so you can do indoor location. And these devices have a USB rechargeable, uh, and they can have a battery life of roughly about 600 reports, we'll say. Um, and so depending on how frequently you report, um, if it's you know once a day, if it's 10 times a day, if it's every 10 minutes, your battery life will um, um, 
will match that. So you have the ability as use case to, if, if you have a closed loop system, like say vaccines or something, you want a short trip within town, but you want to make sure they're at the right temperature and all that jazz, you can have that reporting every 10 minutes, five minutes, and it comes back, you plug it in, recharge it, and off you go. We've got folks looking at it for things like pet tracking. So um, they have a little collar to put on a pet um, and uh, uh, same idea, you know, just a series of short walks so you can turn the reporting way up or, you know, if you want, we have other applications where they're just tracking works in progress for manufacturing sites where, you know, three times a day is fine. And this thing will last, you know, a year and then they'll, uh, you know, at some point in the process, they'll just plug it in, recharge it and off it goes again. I, I suppose people tracking is a, is a possible application too. these packages and pets and why not people? Yeah, no, we've, we've, we've actually had some inquiries about that specifically, you know, folks um, um, uh, in, in some of the homes that they, that they like to have let folks out and, and for safety reasons, they can have that they can bring this along with them as a part of a check in check out process. And again, you know, when they come back, you can plug it in when they're out, you can have a report at whatever suitable frequency that uh, works for, for the folks involved. And this is using the 5G network? Uh... Yeah, it's, it's low power 5G. So, you know, most of the stuff you hear on the news is about the screaming high speeds, but they recognized if they could drive down the complexity of the um, connection, they could drive down the chipset costs and the wireless costs for the, you know, the internet of thing type applications. Um, you know, the, the millions of the, those types of applications. So that's what you're seeing is these uh, great price points providing that uh, functionality with low power uh, 5G, it's LTEM or NBLT, depending on where you are in the world. We talked before about the, the numbers of different kinds of devices that are out there for tracking. What advantages do you feel you have over the many competitors in, in what you're doing? Um, so the low power 5G, I mean, it's disruptive from the, you know, the power draw point of view it provides you, you know, much better battery performance over legacy technologies and the price points have improved. Um, you know, having said that, the, the, the market for tracking is, 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 is pretty large. It's obnoxiously large. There's, there's all kinds of opportunities. So there's all kinds of use cases. So it's kind of a case of a rising tide lifts all ships. Um, we think there's a pretty big market for these kinds of applications. And I, I don't even think we've uh, turned over all the potential use cases because, you know, every, uh, every other day we're having a conversation with a group of folks about this and they have a different use case that we're, we'll discover um, in that meeting. And these would typically be available through carriers and this particular unit is coming to market uh, pretty soon. Yeah, so um, by the end, by the start of summer, we're gonna, we'll have our first uh, production runs in for delivery and beyond the market. We work through folks like um, T-Mobile, AT&T, and depending where you are on the planet, Bell up in Canada, and there's different parts of the planet. We will work with different carriers, but it's just coming to market um, basically the beginning of July. So uh, commercially. And people wonder, okay, so this is going to connect to a, a cell phone network. So it's going to take a pretty big bite out of my budget, but uh, I guess it, not necessarily. Tell me about it. Yeah, no, it's the, um, as I mentioned, the, uh, you know, part of the disruption with the low power 5G is the, um, uh, you know, the re reduced complexity of, of the connection. The data costs are way, way down. So, um, from what you you know what people are typically used to, so now we're sort of all of our discussions are negotiating under you know, usually 500k or a meg, whereas most people are talking gigabytes and multiple gigabytes and that sort of thing. So that's where that market plays, um, and you know the price points in and around like a year with the hardware with a year of service is in and around the hundred dollar price point um, um, that to be announced here at the end of the end of this month. I guess we're in June already, and it. Um, it's designed for that, uh, you know, it's designed as a lower cost tracking system with, you know, pretty enhanced functionality. So it's a, it's an interesting uh, convergence of the technology and the price points with some of these use cases. So you're saying that the, getting the device and having a year of service could cost as little as a hundred dollars or so a month. I, I know carriers are going to set the prices here more than likely. Yeah. Right? Let's say hundred and change for the first year. And after that, it's just, you know, once the hardware is paid for, it's just the service. Really interesting. So where do you see this going? I mean, you, you've made it this small. What's, what do you think is next on the horizon? 
Oh God, there's lots of uh, lots of different things. Um, I mean, a lot of the development uh, gets driven by uh, end user uh, use cases. So some tweaking of that system. But as I mentioned, you know, you take a device like this that we're using today, it's commercially available in the market and you shrink that. Um, so maybe I have a little bit less battery on this, but you know, if you marry the two, where does that go? Um, there's, there's, you know, there's interesting things coming along with, uh, um, the, you know, things like blockchain and that sort of thing for some of the markets. The connected sensor side is looking pretty interesting as well. We've seen some pretty disruptive changes for things like um, monitoring, remote sensor monitoring, like think uh, uh, water pressure in, in water mains in cities. You've got, you know, it's not a very nice environment to be trying to run the wires. So a non-powered asset would be a huge gain. And if you can get the frequent updates that we are able to provide at, um, at the price points we provide, it really is a game changer for some organizations. Uh, it's, it's early going in that connected sensor market. So there's, there's lots, of, lots of interesting uh, avenues ahead of us. For more information, where's the best place for people to go? Um, our website's pretty, uh, uh, pretty open there at beware.com. Uh, there's some sections there. You can request some information. Um, we put uh, a bunch of our stuff up there. You know, we have LinkedIn and Facebook, that sort of thing. But um, yeah, the website's probably a good place to start. And again, it's spelled B-E-W-H-E-R-E, -E -E, beware. Ryan Boychuk, thank you so much for taking the time with us. Thank you, Fred. Now this. It takes a lot of listening to build a better radio. And that's just what the folks at Sea Crane have done. Bob Crane and his crew, nestled among the rivers and tallest trees in the world in Fortuna, California, have made a habit of listening to their customers. And that's just what they've done in building the CC Skywave SSB, the Swiss Army knife of portable radios. For everyday listening to AM or FM in the yard or patio or on the nightstand, without having to drain a mobile phone battery, it's a great companion. But it is also a companion equipped for NOAA weather information and alerts that can be life-saving. You can listen to FEMA and Coast Guard transmissions too. Beyond all of that, you can tune into shortwave signals from around the world. It's compact, easy to take with you, and built to last. The CC Skywave SSB. Click on the link at textonation.com.